All right, thank you everyone for joining me today, coming up today, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect, all right, great, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Joan, for the introduction, and thank you everyone from the committee for introducing yourself. Um, I'm really honored that, you know, many people showed up today. We have about more than 50 attendees from over seven time zones, so really I'm honored. So my talk today is about my PhD proposal. It's on sound sensing and feedback for deaf and hard of hearing people. I'll be covering three areas of my work, home sound, sound work, and hollow sound. Before I begin, a brief note of accessibility. I'm hard of hearing, and you may have trouble understanding my speech. In that case, please turn on the caption. There is a closed caption button located at the bottom of your Zoom window, which will transcribe my speech. I repeat, a closed caption CC button. So we also have sign language interpreters available. If you are an ASL user, I request you to please use the side-by-side -side mode. Uh, I repeat, use the side-by-side -side mode if you are an ASL language user, so that you can see both the slide and the interpreter at the same time. Okay, so let's just start with the introduction. So as we all know, our world it filled with a rich diversity of sound ranging from dog barking to door opening to wind howling. These sounds help hearing people go about their daily life. For example, a microwave beep signals us to get a food or a fire alarm helps us get away from a potential danger. Beyond conveying actionable information, sound also helps us feel more present. For example, when I'm hiking, I like to hear about a bird chirp or a waterfall. It makes me feel more connected, more present in the world. These sounds, however, can be unacceptable to the large section of a population who have trouble hearing. Do you know about 15% of U of Dutch adults, U of adults have some trouble hearing? The rates of disabling hearing loss are lower, but they rise substantially with age from 2% at age 45 to 54 years, 45 to 54 years, to 50% for those who are above 75 and older. So I want to be careful here though. Not all DHS people are interested in the sound. In fact, there are many of them who use alternative ways, such as sign language, flashing light based doorbell, or a vibratory alarm clock to deal with the information typically convert to hearing people through speech and sound. At the same time, there are also many others who want to have greater access to speech and sound information. For example, our survey with 201 DSS participants has shown that 73.1% of them were extremely or very interested in sound awareness. These are the people to increasingly adopt technology for improving their speech and sound recognition, such as hearing aids, cochlear implants, and more recently, Google Live Transcribe that shows speech transcription on a phone. However, these technologies only address a very small minuscule of needs, and there are many remaining needs in different contexts. Let's see what our study participants have to say about that. I can't keep up with everything that everyone says, mm -hmm. especially when it goes back and forth mm -hmm. too quickly. Here's another quote. My hearing is fail miserably in areas with background noise. I can't understand anything in a restaurant. So I just sit there and do my own thing. I feel left out all the time. I have a flash in doorbell, but one day I was sleeping and somebody came at night and rang the doorbell and I couldn't see the light. So I had to use, get a vibratory bed shaker for the doorbell. How many devices should I keep? I always have cars trailing behind me in the mall parking lot and I can't get away in time because I can't hear the phone sound. I feel embarrassed. One more. I left my vacuum cleaner running for such a long, long time. The person next door got an eye and came and told me that there is a terribly loud sound in my home. Gosh, 
but not running for three days and many more. Informed by this news and the lived experiences of many DHS people, including my own, I'm examining new approaches to enhance sound awareness for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. Specifically, in my PhD, I'm examining sound feedback along three dimensions, sound, which can be speech or non-speech, the contact and with the feedback is delivered, which can be home, offered, one mobile, etc., and the feedback modality itself, which can be visual or haptic. To explore this design space, I'm examining three systems. First, to provide non-speech sound feedback in the home, I'm exploring a visual smart home system called HomeCam. To additionally support non-speech sound feedback in more portable environment, I'm examining using visual and vibration modality on a smartwatch, which I call SoundWatch. And finally, for speech feedback in multiple contacts, I'm examining visual feedback on head-mounted displays using a system called Holosam. My overarching vision is to transform how DHS people think about, experience, and engage with the sound. So here are the three projects again. In today's talk, I'll motivate the need for each project, describe my completed work for each project, and outline my proposed work for the next 1.5 years. So both the completed and the proposed work together will form my dissertation. So note that there will be three proposed work, one, two, and three, and I'll describe them under each project separate, separately rather than mentioning them together at the end. And you know, my dissertation is also informed by some of my other work for DHS users, which are just shown to you in the top right, but I will not be covering them today. So let's just start with the first project, Hometown. So Hometown is a smart home town awareness system for DHS users. I want to briefly acknowledge a multidisciplinary hometown team consisting of undergraduate students, high school students, graduate students, and professors. So let's just start with a quick video of me describing the project. The project is inspired by my own personal experience as someone who is hard of hearing. My project is called The Hometown contains a series of IoT displays deployed in different locations in the home. This is the server running on my desktop in my office and it's connected to my home where the IoT displays and the smartwatch are installed. So let's say we have one tablet in our living room, one in a bedroom, and one in a kitchen. And these tablets send the information in the environment and provide that feedback in terms now I want to just pause here for a bit and describe the visualization for blank attendee. So we have a floor plan of the home on the top of, of which the emanating pulses and the waveform uh, represent the, the sound occurring in each room. And below is the history visualization showing the past sound activity in each room. So I think I'll just stop the video here and describe the project myself starting with a brief motivation. So smart home technology such as Amazon Alexa or Google Home had been a long-standing topic of interest in a chair users. However, the examination of its potential to support accessibility is only recent. I explored how smart home technology can be used to support sound awareness for DHS people, beginning with uh, two formative studies to examine the needs of DHS people and culminating with two field studies of a smart home sound awareness system. Let's start with the page one, that is exploring need in the home. While prior work are examined sound awareness needs of DHS users, only a few studies that explored needs in multiple domains, such as in the workplace or outdoors, have included questions specifically about the home contact. Building on this work, I performed a more targeted examination of sound awareness news, concern, and preferences in the home contact using two formative studies. Study one, 
which included Tamil Sattar interview on Tanabarna in the home with 12 DHS participants, and 32, where we conducted a scenario based evaluation of three initial Tanabarna prototypes with 10 DHS participants. So, for this uh, scenario based evaluation, when we examined a lounge in a university building as a home and called the participant inside that lounge. Our team members, Eileen and Marcus, were asking out various home activities uh, to make it more realistic, you know, like pouring a coffee or doing the dishes, flushing a toilet in the bathroom, and the system was visualizing all of this down. So, for example, over here, you can see that Eileen is pouring a coffee and the coffee pour visualization is shown to the participant. So, you know, it was really fun doing all of this. However, the evaluation was the budget of ours and our wizard was sitting behind the participant, listening to the sound and triggering the visualization. So anyway, using the both studies, the study one and study two, we uncovered what sound information people wanted, how to show that information, and some themes relevant to the home, such as the need for privacy. Like for example, I don't want to know if someone is using toilet with the, with the privacy, you know or we discover the need to mitigate information overload. Like for example, don't show every sound when there is a large guest party. Informed by the founders, I then conducted a field study of hometown, the first IoT-based sound awareness system for the home. I evaluated two iterative prototypes, prototype one, which gave simple but accurate sound feedback, and prototype two, which included more complex sound features, for example, town and entry. So both prototype one and prototype two displayed visualization on a Microsoft Surface 2 tablet and closed in a laser cut wooden frame. So these prototypes mimic the design of recent green based smart home displays, such as the Amazon Echo Show, which have been increasingly used in the home nowadays. So I want to show you a live demo of the prototype too, which is actually deployed in my home. So let me just uh, share with you the demo screen and hope that it works. Here we go. I'm going to refresh the screen. Uh, close this one. And then tell me where I'm down demo. Okay, so basically this is what is actually shown on the display that I have in my home. So this is what is deployed in my living room right now. And the visualization over here is what I am showing to you on, on your on the screen. So over here, if you see the top part is actually the core plan of my home. As I'm talking to you, there is a speech sound being shown as pulsed in the living room here because I'm currently sitting in my living room. And on the bottom here, with the history view showing the sound activity for the past six hours. So, you know, it's been quiet for the uh, most part in my home. You know, this is like quite quiet here, it's very quiet here, except for the hum in the hum of the fridge in the kitchen, probably. And as I was practicing my talk all morning, so this is like all sort of like peak town been visualized from like 7.30 in the morning to right now. So, you know, um, I have this deployed in my home and it's been, it's been quite useful. So, for example, I used to leave my kitchen fan running all the time, but now if I leave my fan running at night and come to the bedroom about to sleep, uh, I'll just see on the tablet, oh, there is a sound in the kitchen. And then I go back to the kitchen and turn my fan off. So, you know, it's been helpful having this system in my home. And if you want, you can continue seeing the demo uh on the chat window so i'm going to like just paste the demo link on the chat window for everyone and then we can see it, continue to see it if you want so here you go okay but let's just continue with the talk now okay so i'm gonna go back here here we go okay so i deployed the prototype in the home of dhs people so each home contains three to five displays in different rooms. For example, the one shown here 
ตัวปุ๊บปุ๊บปุ๊บจะแชร์เลยตัวเองตัวเองออลดาร์ฮาร์ดแวร์มาจากแปลงว่าถูกดรีฟที่ชอมคณะติดเลยบัดบายไปย
आज प्रवीण बाना जर पटाइच पण शुअर दोस्त मला राउट डोर बट इट थल मी दॅट अ साऊंड इज हॅपनिंग सो आय कॅन लुक अराउंड विजुअली फॉर द सोर्स ऑफ साऊंड Okay so let me just give you a very short demo with the walk that I wrote in Livre and I'm going to start sharing my slides so you can see the page of the walk a little bit better okay so let me just try this on hopefully this would work and so this is the walk that I routinely use on the daily basis hopefully I don't know if how many of you can see the screen but it's been a little uh, Okay, let me start uh, I'll do this up. Okay. Okay. Uh, so as I'm speaking right now, it's actually showing me a speech sound right now. So look at, look at this one. Can everybody see it? It's a little hard to see the watch, but hopefully you can see that. Okay, and then let's try another sound. So let's say we try to knock a bit. Okay, so now it's showing me a knocking sound. Let's do it over here. It's actually quite loud. But it sounds better. Okay, so as I'm speaking right now, I already know that I'm speaking, and it's repeatedly showing me the cheese sound every five minutes. So I don't, wanna, I don't want to know about the cheese sound. So what I'll do is I'll just choose the smooth button here to smooth it for 10 minutes. So I'll click over here. to the smooth button and I would just use that to one of the things here. So over here, I'll just use the smooth button and I'll just click on this one. Right, so now I won't know the, I would just want, won't show me the sound, speech sound for at least 10 minutes now. So besides showing the notification, the watch also vibrates over time. So now uh, I use SoundWatch myself routinely and so it has helped a lot. Like for example, it helps me notice that there may be a car behind me in a parking lot and I need to get away. Or, you know, it identifies uh, like a siren, like an ambulance when I'm driving, but before I can hear it with my hearing aid. So, so it's been great using the watch. So let's just go back to the, the slide now. I'm going to share the screen again. वंडरफुल टीम वर्किंग ऑन साउंड वॉच So that's what I've done so far, the two initial studies for Sanwa. I'm going to now transition to my proposed work for Sanwa, starting with a brief motivation. So while our initial work, the two studies, helped identify promising smartwatch-based system design through drop-back remand. First, for sound classification, I used a generic model that was trained on large sound online sound corpora and to improve accuracy and support individual use cases, the end user should be able to customize the model in situ. And second, our evaluation was done in a lab on how DSS people may use smartwatch-based sound feedback in the field remains to be studied. In my proposed work, I will deal with each of these drawbacks. Specifically, I will explore end-user customization of the model, which is the proposed work one, and the field study of SoundWatch, which is the proposed work two. So let's start with the first one, the end-user customization. To really, I think there was a mistake. To really enable end user customization, we need to be able to train with a very few samples. So train with a very few samples, that are one, five or 10 samples, is also called the few-shot learning. 
So if you are successful, that could really enable some really cool use cases. Like imagine, for example, a deaf parent training the sound recognition model to distinguish between the sound of the children by recording only a few sound samples from each child. Another example is from our hometown work. So before we model in the kitchen, we had a Portland sink, and the hometown system would recognize it would leave the water running. Now, if we have a stainless steel sink and the sound of water hitting it is very different. So I want to be able to tell the system, here are some sounds from a new sink, how to then be able to recognize it. So this is what a few chart learning, training with a few samples would allow us to do. While past work at a German few chart learning for real life setting, they have been focused on computer vision and natural language recognition tasks. Indeed, instead, I will examine few chart learning for sound classification in the field. My plan would involve two phases. In phase one, I will perform algorithmic experiment to examine three approaches for for future classification on real life sound recording, mammal, meta app, photographic language. So these meta learning approaches are common for object recognition, but have not been investigated for real life sound classification. I will also compare again three baseline supervised approaches, found during the last year, which is called FTLAC, found during the whole model FTL, and neuros neighbor NN. For the data set, I will use the field recording from our initial sound work, work, the work that I just showed you before. So for but part of that work, we collected sound from multiple contexts, from home, from office, for out, from outdoor, and we will use that for, for phase one as the few short work. Evaluation metric will be top one accuracy, top three accuracy, and area under the ROC curve, which is AUC. To see how the future techniques performed in the field. In phase two, I will also conduct a short intuitive evaluation of our best model from phase one with five to 10 DSS participants. And for this, the participant will record a few sounds and then evaluate the trained model on our SoundWatch app for one to three days. Participant data will be collected using pre post interviews brief into the personage and the white lab. To summarize, the expected contribution of this proposed research one includes quantification of several future personalization approaches for real life and classification and preliminary insights from into the evaluation of the best approach from phase one. Okay, now let's move on to the proposed future two, that is the longer field study. So you know, recall that I mentioned before that prior workshop only evaluated providing sound feedback on smart watches in the lab and how DHS people may use such feedback in everyday life remains to be explored. So specifically, some research questions that remain to be studied are how do DHS people use smartwatch-based sound awareness technology in diverse contexts? How does long-term use of this technology change the user understanding of sound and information converted through sound? And what privacy or social implications arise with an always-on sound recording app in different contexts? To examine this question, I will perform a field deployment with 30 to 40 DHS participants. These participants will be recruited using an opt-in form on the SoundWatch app, email list, and social media. The protocol will contain pre-post interviews, weekly surveys covering such and failures, a lightweight form to capture feedback in C2, like for example, to bookmark an anomaly or an interest in event the participant wants to discuss in the interview and user clock, example, you know, user time, battery levels, etc. To summarize, the expected contribution of this work would include characterization of real life, real world users of smartwatch based on feedback for a variety of contacts, design guidelines for future wearable sound awareness system, 
out of court and improve downward app for the world. So that completes my proposed work too. So here's the work that I have described so far for town work and hometown. Now both the town work and hometown focus on non peace town feedback. As a third area, I'm also examining how to convert peace feedback to DSS users using augmented clarity. That is Hollow Town, head mounted display for speech feedback. So this is our Hollow Town, Hollow, Hollow Town team consisting of people from University of Washington and Caledas University. Again, I'll start with explaining the needs for the project. So many DSS people use real-time captioning to access speech. So I don't know how many of you are aware of real-time captioning, but if you're not, then the closed caption button at the bottom of the June window can show you how real-time caption look like. Now typically, these captions are shown on a laptop or a large screen or after the release of Google Live Transcribe on a smartphone. This forces the user to shift attention to the captioning screen, thereby drawing their gaze away from the conversational partners or the environment. That is why we are examining an alternative approach, displaying captions directly in the user's field of view using a head mounted display. While Pathwork has suggested showing caption on SMD, prior to the beginning of my dissertation research, no work had evaluated a working prototype. To demonstrate the viability of the exception captioning approach, I performed three initial explorations of SMD captioning. A 45-day art ethnographic evaluation where I myself used an SMD-based captioning app when I'm in my classes and group meeting, and a semi-controlled evaluation where 10 DSS people used the SMD captioning app while walking on a predefined route on a campus building. And building a preliminary prototype that displays SMD caption with two other conversational cues, speaker location, and non peace sound, such as door knock or bell ringing, that may occur uh, during a uh, conversation. The third exploration is our current Hollow Sound prototype. Now, so I wanted to show a demo of this uh, current Hollow Time prototype, but you know, it's really hard to do a remote demo with augmented reality. So instead, what I'm going to do is to show you a video that was made by our team. In this video, we present Hollow Sound. Well, I think uh, the video might have stopped when I paused my video. So I'm going to go back and then start it again. An augmented reality prototype based on Microsoft HoloLens that provides three kinds of sound feedback for deaf and hard of hearing people. Real-time speech transcription, source location, and sound identity are visualized through the user interface. HoloSound uses Microsoft Azure's speech-to-text API to transcribe speech. The transcribed text is displayed as captions shown to the user in augmented reality. For sound localization, we use a portable microphone array and Raspberry Pi to display the direction of the sound source as a circular arc. For identity, HoloSound connects to a deep learning classification engine on the cloud and shows the three most recent sounds at the left of the captions. We'll demonstrate HoloSound's real-time speech transcription and sound localization features using a conversation that was captured through our HoloLens prototype. Hey Robin, how's it going? I got two movie tickets tonight. Do you want to go with me? Oh, hey, Greg. I'm doing okay. 
Um, but unfortunately, I cannot make it to the movies tonight because I have homework to do. In addition to captioning spoken conversations and displaying the speaker's location, HoloSound also provides the identity and location of non-speech sounds, such as a faucet. Sound recognition can be useful as notification for events that will require the user's attention. For example, when a phone is ringing. Or for knocking on a door. Hey Robin, do you have a minute right now? Please refer to our Assets 2020 poster for more information about our system design, implementation, and future work. Okay, so this completes the what I've done for our Hello Sound so far, the three initial explorations, out of which I've shown one to you. And I'm going to now transition to the proposed work, that is the field study. So this is my final proposed work and I'm proposing this field study because while past studies, including my own three explorations, inform the design of future SMD capture and support, these studies were conducted in a lab or a controlled environment. And there is a need for longer term, more ecologically valid field study. So I plan to do this study, but before I describe my plan, let me just detail one key limitation that has been the size of the SMD captioning technology. So the HoloLens that I am using is too big and bulky for uh, long-term use. As you know, when I was doing my autoethnographic evaluation and wearing HoloLens in my classes and group meetings for 45 days, I found that I had neck pain every after every 45 minutes of using it. So it's a, it's a great piece of technology, but it's not suitable for long-term use. However, the good news is that more appropriate form factors are emerging. Consider, for example, the recently introduced Vujic Blade or Google's wearable subtitles, as you can see over here. Now, both these form factors look like glasses, which is good. So now, in our ongoing collaboration with Google, I plan to use these glasses to perform a field deployment of SMD captioning. So specifically, my research question would include how do DSS people use SMD based captioning and uncontrolled setting? And does the user change over time or with contact? How does the long term use of a device affect communication? And finally, what social implications arise when using SMD captioning in different settings, such as alone with friends or with unfamiliar conversational partners? To address this question, I will conduct a two-phase field study starting from a one-week pilot deployment followed by a one-month field deployment. For the pilot testing, I will deploy the prototype with three to five participants for one week each in a staggered fashion, that is iterating on the prototype after each participant. The longer deployment insert will include 10 to 12 participants with maybe four to five at a time, depending upon how many devices we have with Google. And protocol for both pilot and longer deployment will be the same and will consist of pre-post interviews, weekly surveys, a lightweight intuitive feedback form on the device itself and the user's log. In summary, the expected contributions include prioritization of real-world usage of SMD captioning across a variety of contexts, design guidelines for future SMD-based sound awareness systems, and of course, an improved SMD captioning prototype for the world. So this finishes my description of the third and final proposed work. So to provide a summary for those who missed, might have missed some part of the talk, I'm examining three novel systems to provide speech and sound feedback to DSS users. The home sound, the home-based non-speech sound awareness, which is complete. Soundwatch, smartwatch-based non-speech sound awareness, for which I've completed some work, 
and I propose the end user customization work and the free study. And finally, Hello Sound SMD based feedback for which I've already done preliminary work and I propose the field study. So my three proposed work will allow me to study the sound and speech feedback in the field, really uncovering how DSS people may use this feedback in their daily life and how it may change the understanding of sound and their environment. So, you know, I frequently get asked this question, what is the technical novelty of my work? So my research primarily considers elements from the field of human-computer interaction. I do the full cycle research from understanding user needs to making systems to conducting field deployment and then releasing them to the public. But here are some very specific technical innovations related to applied machine learning and sound sensing and my work. So for home sound, it is basically system development and deep learning based sound recognition. And you know, sound recognition seems common now, but you know, this work was done in 2018 when it was just the beginning, and now Apple and Google picked it up. For sound work, it is making the sound recognition work on the device. So our smallest model, for example, is 12 MB. There was a question on the chat uh, about like how big is the model and whether we can run the model uh, online without interaction. Uh, yes, we can. I think the model, the size of the model is 12 MB that we have, but the model can completely run on the on the watch itself. And future work with end user personalization using meta learning. And for Hollow Sound, so far it's been a software, you know, caption that can be placed and moved around in the CD space whenever the user wants them to be. But now in collaboration with Google, we may be exploring hardware design for glass style assembly. So this is my uh, expected timeline. I will just quickly cover the most relevant part. So for the ongoing sound watch future work, that is the proposed work one, the end user customization, the target is to finish by April 2021 and submit it to the Bush conference. The Hollow Sound field study will be from January to April 2021 during my internship at Google, and we plan to submit the work to CAR. And finally, the soundwatch field study will start after the 2021 guideline and go on till April of 2022. So if all goes well, I plan to graduate in 1.5 years, that is in June 2022. So reflection. Based on my completed work, I'd like, just like to leave you with one or two overarching and reflection for what you can do to better support sound awareness. So first, I largely explore providing sound information for taking a necessary action, you know, like microwave beep or door knocking. But sound is much more than being used just for actionable information. On our participants, for example, use my system for experiential purposes as well, that is to notice that a bird is chirping or just to notice that their wooden house makes a lot of noise when they walk. So that was an interesting finding that we did not anticipate and may require further investigation. But specifically, how can we design to support sound awareness for experiential purposes, to feel more present? What feedback should be given for such sound and how will this feedback compare to that for more actionable or safety related sound that remains to be explored? Secondly, I will largely explore providing visual feedback for sound with just a touch of vibration feedback on smartwatches. What all sophisticated haptic design can be made for sound feedback? That remains to be explored. My teammate, Steven Goodman, explored several vibratory pattern designs on smartwatches for sound feedback, but his work was intentionally formative and future work needs to explore working solution and with other form factors such as on an SMD. Finally, for speech feedback, I provide the transcript in verbatim on an SMD. While it's useful, you know, reading word for word text requires a lot of cognitive attention. And so for conversation, would may not require full attention, you know, like with friends or family, we should explore how to automatically summarize topics 
have a conversation to the NLP. So finally, I'd like to point out the more broad impact of my work. So let's see. As I mentioned before, uh, Canvas is already released on Google Play Store and it's actively maintained by our team. It is used by more than 200 DHS people daily. So you know, it's really hard to carry a research power to production and I'm proud that a team was able to do it. And judging by some early comments from the user, Canvas has already found some critical use cases, such as for knowing if someone is knocking or a faucet is left running. So it's been very rewarding for us. And for Hello Sound, we were already collaborating with Google, as I mentioned earlier, and may eventually productize the captioning glasses, the low form factor uh, SMD captioning, which looks like glasses. Our sound recognition has already been released into consumer smartphones, as we know, in Android and iPhone. And so this is really inviting industrial attention. These advances overall have a potential to benefit a large section of the population. So consider, for example, 15% of US adults have some trouble hearing. And you know, this number could be even more for a country with a greater noise pollution. So note that this is a huge number. This means that for every about fifth person in the US, there is some hearing loss, and they can benefit from using my technology. Beyond the deaf and out of hearing users, there are also even broader applications for my work. Sound awareness technologies can also benefit hearing people or for those with neurodiverse abilities. Like for example, let's say if you are wearing your headphones and listening to music and somebody knocks at your door, you may appreciate having a watch or a smartphone display tell you that someone is knocking. Similarly, home surveillance is a big area. If a thief breaks your glass window on the first floor, say when you are sitting on the second floor of your home, a hometown can alert you about it. Finally, the ability to sense and display sound feedback had wide application in other domains as well, such as for wildlife surveys, open surface mapping, game audio debugging, mechanical appliance repairs, and military purposes. So there are a whole, whole range of applications that my work can enable. And for researchers to build upon my work, all my code base is open source. Before I end, I would just like to take a moment to thank a lot of, lot of people who have played a critical role in my unique journey of PhD. The first of are my advisors, Professor John Frolich and Professor Lee Affenleder, who have been instrumental in shaping my PhD. So thank you. And next are my committee members, which contain my advisors, Professor Jacob Wabrak, Professor John Mankoff, Professor Dr. Larner, and Professor Jeff Bigham. Thank you to you as well. And finally, very important, are my friends, family, and colleagues who have offered me constant support throughout my PhD. So thank you really all. I am very, very grateful to you. So I'll end with that. Thank you, everyone. You have been a great crowd. I'll take any questions now.